Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena games video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a red-green landfall aggro mutate deck that tries to combine some of the new cheap landfall creatures with a mutate mechanic from Ikoria. So first off, let's take a look at some of our landfall creatures. We've got the four copies of Akum Hellhound, one mana for an 01 elemental dog with landfall, giving it plus two plus two until end of turn whenever land enters a battlefield under our control. And then at 2 mana we also have the full playset of Brushfire Elemental, a red and a green for a 1-1 Elemental with haste, and it cannot be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less, and Landfall also gives it plus 2 plus 2. And then of course we've got Lotus Cobra, the 2 mana 2-1 two snake, giving 1 mana of any color whenever a land enters a battlefield under our control. So these are some of the cheap Landfall creatures in the deck, and then our game plan is going to be to mutate onto those creatures with our various mutate creatures, and there's no shortage of those mutate creatures in the deck. One of the most important ones is a migratory Greathorn, 4 mana for a 3-4 beast, but we can mutate for 2 and a green, and then whenever this creature mutates we can search our library for a basic land card and put it onto the battlefield tapped. So while mutating and increasing our creature's power and toughness, turning our Hellhound from an 0-1 into a 3-4, we also get to search a land and enable landfall, so all of a sudden our Hellhound is now a 5-6 that can attack, and we can potentially enable land fall multiple times per turn if we have a land we can play as well. So that's why the Great Horn is such a powerful inclusion in this archetype. And then we also have two copies of Gem Razor, which we can mutate for one and double green, turning our creature into a 4-4 Reach Trampler. And whenever this creature mutates, we get to destroy target artifact or enchantment an opponent controls, which is very useful as well. And then Everquill Phoenix, a card that didn't get a ton of love in previous standard mutate decks. It's a 4 mana 4 4 Phoenix with flying, and mutates for 3 in a red, turning our creature into a 4 4 flyer. And whenever this creature mutates, we get to make a red artifact token named Feather that we can sacrifice for 1 mana to return target Phoenix card from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So it gives our Phoenix a bit of recursion. And being able to turn some of our landfall creatures into flyers means we can avoid any ground stalls and just fly over and deal a ton of damage. And then last but not least, we've got the Auspicious Sterix, 5 mana for a 6-6 six, six Elk Beast, can mutate for 5 and a green, and whenever this creature mutates, we can exile cards from the top of our library until we exile X permanent cards, where X is the number of times this creature has mutated, and put those permanents onto the battlefield, so we can find a whole lot of creatures, but also just finding more lands with the Auspicious Sterix is great if we're enabling landfall for the Hellhound and the Brushfire Elemental at the same time. So this is kind of the mutate package in the deck. Now let's take a look at some of our other card choices. At one mana we also have two copies of Spike Field Hazard, one mana for an instant that deals one damage to any target, and if a permanent dull damage this way would die, it gets exiled instead. So not only do we get to deal with one toughness creatures, like opposing Lotus Cobras, but we can also tag an Uro with it as it's going to the graveyard, as we can now exile it instead. So Hazard has a ton of utility, and then of course we can also play it as a tap land if we just need to enable landfall. Then at 2 mana, besides our 4 copies of Lotus Cobra and Brushfire Elemental, we can also use the 2 mana Adventure Stomp from Bonecrusher Giant, dealing 2 damage to any target, and damage cannot be prevented this turn, and then afterwards we can still play the 4-3 Giant. And then at 3 mana we also have the full playset of Kazandu Mammoth, 3 mana for a 3-3 Elephant with Landfall, giving it plus 2 plus 2 until end of turn, and we can also play it as a tapped land called Kazandu Valley. And then we also have two copies of Rada, Heart of Keld, 3 mana for a 3-3 Legendary Elf Warrior, and as long as it's our turn, Rada has First Strike, and we can look at the top card of our library at any time, and we can play lands from the top of our library as well, so another great way to keep hitting land drops each turn to enable landfall. And for 6 mana, Rada gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of lands we control. And because Rada isn't a human, we can always mutate onto it as well. And then we've got all the mutate creatures here with Gem Racer, Great Horn, Phoenix, and Sterix. Now you might be wondering why we're not playing Skewed Mob, as it pairs well with the mutate mechanic. If we mutate onto a Skewed Mob and then hit lands 6 and upwards, we actually get to copy the entire mutate stack, including the Skewed Mob and the mutated creature on top of it. So that makes for a very powerful Skewed Mob synergy. 
but we aren't really playing it because we don't have that much ramp if you look at the deck. The only creature that helps us ramp is the Great Horn. The Lotus Cobra makes more mana, but it doesn't put more lands in play, so it's not all that useful when it comes to the Skewed Mob. And maybe once we mutate Sterix, we can put additional lands in play as well. But our deck is much more low to the ground, trying to get in early damage with Hellhound and Brushfire Elemental, and isn't necessarily looking to hit a ton of land drops to enable the Skewed Mob, so that's maybe for a different deck. And then going over the mana base, we've already covered Hazard and Kazandu Mammoth, which we can potentially play as lands. And then we also have two copies of Shatter Skull Smashing, which we can place the Hammer Pass at the cost of three life untapped. And then Smashing is a powerful removal spell, dealing X damage divided as we choose among up to two target creatures and or planeswalkers. And if X is six or more, Smashing deals twice X damage divided as we choose among them instead. And then we've got a few basic lands, five mountains, seven forests, four of the new pathway, that's either red or green, and then a total of six fetch lands, since they combine so well with our landfall mechanic, four copies of Fabled Passage, and even two copies of Evolving Wilds, just because enabling a landfall twice in one turn is so powerful. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, with a decent looking hand. Double Rada may be a little awkward, but if it's the target of removal, it's nice to have a backup. And then Double Hellhound can do a lot of early damage. It's interesting when we play the Fabled Passage here. Because I kind of want to play Rada on three, and at the moment, the only way to do that is by fetching with the Passage. Alright, that helps. And then turn 3 Rada, turn 4 Fable Passage. Turn 2 Seasoned Hollow Blade. Hmm. That does line up pretty well against my Hellhound, but there's a nice top deck. Now we can mutate onto the Hellhound, get an extra land, and attack past the Hollow Blade even if they try and block. They're pretty likely to just block the 7 damage and discard a card. Discards Nahiri, so opponents on a red-white warrior deck. Maybe featuring Winota. Fable Passage to get a red mana. And a core blade master, one one double strike, and equipped warriors have double strikes, so they're likely playing some equipment in there as well. Lotus Cobra to draw, so it can go. Lotus Cobra play lands, play Rada, and then I don't even have to fetch with Fabled Passage if I don't want to. Brushfire Elemental on top. I guess it's still a fine draw. Second attack, and then if they don't force me to fetch with Passage, I may not do so. Opponent does chump, so I'm less incentivized to search with Fabled Passage now. Discards another card. So this is definitely a situation that highlights the importance of having a bit of evasion with our Phoenix and with our Gem Racer giving Trample to avoid our creatures getting chum blocked. Maul of the Skyclaves giving plus two plus two flying and double strike. Thanks to the Blade Master, of course, otherwise it's just first strike. So 5-3, double striking Hello Blade. It's gonna stay on defense. Yeah, that's not easy to get past. Play a lands. So I could fetch and then activate Rada here too. I guess that's not a bad idea. Don't really want to draw a Lotus Cobra anyway. And 
then do I just attack with everyone here? I think so. Opponent can block two. And then they're still taking 11 here. And then one of the blocks would be a trade and the other one would be a chum block. And we've got a backup Rada, so the fact that they're trading here is actually not too bad. And then the Stomp from Bonecrusher Giant should be able to close out the game next turn. Alright, so pretty nice turn there. It's going to be a Fireblade Charger, 1-1 one, one, that when it dies deals damage equal to its power to any targets. Pairs well with equipment. And a Skyclave Apparition as their last card. Can exile one of my permanents. But yeah, the Stomp from Bonecrusher Giant is just going to end the game here. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Uh, this hand's probably keepable. Uh, it's a bit light on mana, and we might struggle to mutate Sterix, but I'll keep. If we find Great Horn, that's probably one of our better draws if the Brushfire Elemental survives. Sadly, I will be forced to use the Evolving Wilds instead of saving it to enable Landfall. Still missing double green for Mutates. Although we can Mutate the Phoenix. Alright, I guess change of plan. Just kill the Karyatids and then next turn we can go Brushfire into a land. And still attack for three. Garrick's Harbinger. Fabled Passage, an interesting draw. Could allow me to just play the Brush Fire and stay on defense with it, but at that point we might as well just play the Bone Crusher and block. And hope they don't have a fight spell here. It's going to be a Warbriar Blessing, taking out Bonecrusher Giant and letting them hit me for four. Gem Razor can maybe kill the enchantments, but it's going to be a slow process. And the opponent's going to gain a ton of card advantage here. Finds a Questing Beast. That's rough. So we're pretty far behind. I guess just play Phoenix so it can trade for Questing Beasts. Although I won't be getting it back anytime soon. Could play Gem Razor to trade instead. Although I might need this to blow up the Blessing, although... I guess I could just play Sterix on 5 and that blocks the Harbinger. So... I guess just playing Gem Racer to trade for Beast and then Sterix to hold off Harbinger is the plan. And then keep Phoenix for later as a recursion could be useful. And of course flying can help us close out the game. Opponent does not have land 4 perhaps. Finds a Visionary. Hellhound a draw. So, I do have the option of mutating my Phoenix onto the Gem Razor, killing the Warbriar Blessing, and then I have a 4 4 that can trade, and then I have the 1 mana to return the Phoenix end of turn even. Comes into play tapped, and then next turn I'll have a Phoenix in play again. Or I can just play Sterix and then next turn mutate onto the Sterix. That feels better to me. Uh, 
and then Gem Razor can hopefully trade for Questing Beasts if that attacks. Sterix can block Harbinger. Lotus Cobra, the draw. So I can essentially play this for free. Just hit a land. And then probably leave the failed passage uncracked. And then we gotta hope to find more mutate creatures to gain advantage with the uh, Sterics. Elder Gargroth. That's a scary one. Alright, let's see what we hit. Just a couple lands. Well, at least my Brushfire Elemental's pretty big now. So... This can attack. Opponent takes it. I'm probably forced to trade for Gargroth if that attacks. Another Warbriar Blessing. It's gonna kill the Sterix. And uh, yeah, there's no useful mutations here with Fabled Passage. I can bring back the Phoenix, but that's not where we want to be. And a Gem Racer mutated. can blow up one of my tokens, but I can activate it in response. Bring back Phoenix. And then my Hellhound can hold off Gargroth. Harbinger attacks. I guess I'd jump with the Cobra. Could have also double blocked the gem racer here and killed it by fetching, but I think I want to keep these to pump my creatures so I can maybe block Gargroth. Gem racer to draw. Let's mutate onto maybe the Hellhound. Make it easier to kill Elder Gargroth if that attacks. Still not in a position to attack myself. Phoenix can trade and we can bring it back. Sends in everyone. So Gem Racer can go on Gargroth and we can fetch. Phoenix and Brushfire probably just double block the Harbinger so it doesn't find more creatures. Or I guess at that point I might as well double block Gargroth. Block here and then fetch. Sure. And 
Another Gargoth. Yep, that's what I was afraid of. Can play Evolving Wilds and then have another 6 6 on defense, but I think I'm just dead on board if they attack with everyone now. Yeah, we didn't find the best cards with the uh, Sterix Mutate. Finding two lands was not what we needed. And Gargoth is definitely a house in this type of matchup. I hope you're ready to fight for your life. Garruk pumps Gargoth. Out of our way. Attack with everyone. And that should be game. GG's. One last fetch. Interesting. It didn't even give me priority to sacrifice the Evolving Wilds here. So keep that in mind if you ever want to fetch Evolving Wilds. It uh, doesn't hold priority, so you probably need to go into full control to make sure you can still fetch to enable landfall. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with uh, fine opening hands. I think I'm just playing this tapped. Turn 2, Brushfire. Turn 3, Brushfire plus Evolving Wilds. Hellhounds a turn late. Suppose I can save the Evolving Wilds and next turn just go Brushfire plus Hellhounds. Opponent on an interesting adventure deck. Typically don't see Zagoth Triome in these decks. So I could smash for 10. If my opponent has Bonecrusher Giant next turn, I'm going to be pretty sad because they get to kill both of my creatures. But if I just go Hellhound Brushfire, I miss out on a ton of damage. I guess it's only 4 damage. All right, fine. And if they don't have Bone Crusher Giant here, they're pretty dead. I guess it could also be Brazen Borrower. Alternatively, I could have played a fetch land and not cracked it to respond to a two damage effect. It's just going to be a Falmar Knight, which can block my Brushfire Elementals, plus we can even kill it now. So that should be game. GG's. A nice turn for kill. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with uh, nice looking hands. Probably start out with Mountain. It's a little greedy to hold the Fabled Passage in case the Cobra dies, but the payoff is definitely there if it survives. Turn on a Flourishing Fox, or opponent on a Cycling deck. Yeah, let's just play the Cobra. And there's not too many ways for the opponent to kill it if they're playing a stock Cycling deck. Well, I guess it's not a stock Cycling deck. Fire Prophecy takes it out. And yeah, now we get punished for not using Fable Passage on turn 1. Although I guess I can still play my Brushfire. Might as well fetch now. Hit for 5. Next turn we can mutate, get an extra land. The fox attacks. 
Cobra to draw, but I think we just gotta mutate here, get some extra lines going. And hit for five. Next turn I can maybe mutate Phoenix. Would be especially useful if my opponent stays back on defense as we can fly over while hitting an extra land drop for next turn. Could also see a fight here, go for blood, yep. Yeah, that's a great one here. As we needed that mutate creature to survive. So now what? Can play Rada plus Cobra. And then hope to mutate Sterix next turn. Or the Phoenix. Just playing the Phoenix without mutating it feels kind of weak. Fable Passage to draw. I guess I'll play it since it's just a free card here. And then next turn I'll be guaranteed a mutated Sterix. How many cycling cards in the graveyard? Four. Gotta be mindful of Zenith Flare. Opponent debating whether they want to keep cycling or maybe do something different. It's going to be another Fire Prophecy killing Rada this time. So, can play my lands. And then mutate Sterix and have Hellhound as an extra blocker as well. Hit a land. I think I'm still attacking with the Sterix. I'm dead to removal. I mean, I'm dead to a Zenith Flare anyway here, so that's probably what's going to happen. I put myself dead to another go for blood by attacking or another fire prophecy. But having to chum block a fox is also not a winning play. So I think we just gotta hope they don't have more removal. We can just chum block here and then next turn fly over for the win. And yep. Zenith Flare to the face to end the game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with an okay hand. So we've got uh, Hellhound into double elemental, couple lanes. So seems good. Facing turn one Swarm Shambler, so it could be a green white plus one plus one counter deck. Fabled Passage could also do some damage next turn. They can block my brush fire. Stone Coil for three. Does have protection from multicolors, but I guess we can still attack past it if we fetch here. Alternatively. I can mutate the Great Horn onto the Brush Fire, so it's no longer a multicolor creature. That sounds better to me.
put an Sarati down to 6. This would be a great spot for Gem Racer or Phoenix. Stonequill for 4, put in passes. So, playing my Brushfire doesn't accomplish a whole lot since they can just block it with Stonecoil. So instead we want to play Mammoth or Rada, although Rada also has the same problem with Stonecoil here. So I guess I just like Mammoth plus Hellhound and then... I maybe don't even have to fetch with Fabled Passage here. Their opponent's just gonna concede since they have to chum block with too many creatures to stay alive. Alright, so yeah, nice aggressive start with Hellhound Elemental into a mutated Great Horn. And those are the types of hands we want with this deck. We're not a slow ramp deck trying to get to the late game. We just want to get it over quickly and use Mutate just to enhance our smaller landfall creatures to get in more damage. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing Yurion Sky Nomad. So, yeah, this hand's keepable. Would love to draw a 2-drop, since we don't have much going on besides the Hellhound in the early turns. Temple of Silence, so probably an Esper control type deck. Or maybe just Black White Doom Foretold. Remorse is gonna have a look. We do have multiple turn 3 plays if the Hellhound survives. Opponent takes a Phoenix. Hazard the draw. Yeah, I guess we just get in some extra damage with Evolving Wilds right now. While we can. Charming Prince. It's gonna scry too. So next turn, probably just mutating Great Horn. And then we can play Rada and potentially play Land of the Top right away in the same turn. Could see a chum block here. Opponent takes seven. And Acquisitions Experts, just gonna take a look at one card. They can have my Forest, I guess. Lotus Cobra. I think we still play Rata first since I don't need the extra mana from Cobra this turn. Smashing. I think I just want to draw the Smashing instead of playing it now. Probably chump with experts. Chumps with a prince. Interesting. I guess they maybe want to flicker the expert with a Yorion that they might have in hand. Charming Prince can also flicker Acquisitions Expert here. But we don't care too much about losing the hazard. And then we can play this as a land thanks to Rada. And then smashing for four can clear both blockers. And that's game. Alright, sweet. So pretty clean victory here over a black-white Yorion deck. So, in conclusion, red-green landfall aggro. There's definitely a lot of ways to build it, so whether you go more low to the ground, whether you include the mutate package or not. But the uh, main takeaway is that 
The Akum Hellhound and the Brushfire Elemental are great inclusions for any aggressive red-green deck, especially alongside a couple extra fetch lands like Evolving Wilds, but the top end of the deck could potentially just be a more traditional aggro deck where you play your full place of the Bone Crusher Giants, you play your Questing Beast, maybe Embercleave. Embercleave is not the best combo with the Mutate package since you tend to go all in on one creature, so it's more difficult to reduce the cost of Embercleave. And with Embercleave, we also have a new way to prevent our opponent from blocking our large landfall creature, so we don't necessarily need Phoenix and Gem Razor to fill that role. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.